I'm Hansi from Like Guardian and you're watching Rockline TV. Welcome back to Slovenia. Great to be here. Uh, after quite a few years back in Ljubljana actually, you played yeah. in Tomin Metal Camp yes. uh, a few years back, but again, back in Ljubljana, so welcome. <laughs> um, you've just released a new album, um, so far it's been really well received, right? Uh, I would say from so, what yeah. I gather so far. It, it, it gets close to overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, we are very satisfied and you can see that a lot of people consider it a sort of all-time Blank Garden favorite already, even though it's just, as really? you said, a few months old. Um, but I, I believe people are easily aware of the potential of the album, so um, uh, we're quite satisfied. You cannot please everyone, that's a, a logical thing as well, but um, the reactions are mainly very positive. Mm -hmm. I think that's mainly because of two things. Um, I have to be honest, I didn't really kind of like the album at first, but it's, it's a grower. Um, was that your intention? I mean, the songs are really complex, but they have all the, all the elements, trademarks of Blind Guardian, it's the folky stuff, the I mean, Twilight of the Gods is really old school, fresh yeah. song, and of course the orchestra pieces. It seems to be a grower to many people, so you're not alone on that one. Um, it was not our intention. We just go straight ahead and you know come up with whatever is getting into our minds and, and needs to be expressed somehow. Um, and we don't make a big difference between straightforward metal songs or orchestrated songs. Um, of course, in a certain way during production you then uh, treat things into uh, a certain direction. But in general, um, we just have to be satisfied with what we are working on. And um, if we have a handful of good songs, um, which we consider to be potentially worth producing an album, we start with an album production. We've had the idea of um, making that again a bridge to the orchestral album, and uh, this is when you know a maximum of orchestration came in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said, I mean, every album so far, at least since I don't know, Nightfall in Middle Earth, has been kind of a, a step forward to, yeah. to your orchestral album. You and this agree? is also when we started working on it, mm -hmm. so um, there is uh, a, a logical continuation. In, in this, as well as in the uh, production of this orchestral album. Still, um, we don't see such a big difference between what we've done in the early 90s, if to say so, Tales from the Twilight World or somewhere far beyond, yeah. or what we're doing nowadays. Even then, we were intending to involve classical or for the Theatre of Pain, right? It was one of best, the first songs. Best example, yeah, yes. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, we, we touched on this subject, so do you have? A time frame for this album orchestral. I know it's been a long time in the making. I've had so many time frames already. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, you're working with a German composer? No, we no? Uh, with a German author. Oh. We're intending to work Markus Heitz, mm -hmm. who is uh, famous for a story about loss. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to do the storyboard for it, but in terms of music, we do everything on our own and it's more or less the same production team we've worked with for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. Um, if I understood correctly, this is going to be just you and the orchestra, right? And first step, yes. Uh, I doubt that we're going to change that because um, it took so long already and we did a lot of recordings. Um, but there, there is an idea to um, involve the band as well, which you could do with the stuff. Um, we either do that in a kind of live situation first or we even you know, dare to do this album for a second run and then with the band. But the first step would be I singing and uh, the orchestra playing. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Can it, you hear it? it is. Um, the song at the edge of time is one of those songs which were uh, originally intended to be part of the orchestra project, but then we came up with uh, some ideas for uh, heavy um, instrumentation, and so um, it, it, is, uh, it ended up on this album. And the same was with uh, Wheel of Time on. Mm -hmm the last album, which I considered to be a more a heavy orientated song and therefore Andre started designing uh, um, distorted guitars to you know, be involved. Mm -hmm. um, it probably really helps not only with this orchestral album that's coming up, but probably with all the albums you've done so far, that you have your own studio, right? You are yeah. not limited time-wise. We are not limited and um, it's like 
exploring the studio and exploring instruments. That's how it started, even with uh, uh, Theatre of Pain. Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, the orchestral part was more a natural expression, but uh, whatever we did ever since, uh, somewhere far beyond, is adapted to the simple fact that we have a studio. Mm -hmm. And the studio has grown over the years. When we um, started in 1990, it was basically a rehearsal room with some analog material, and uh, we always improved that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's a professional studio. Which, you know, we do not even use for songwriting so much because um, nowadays with computers and with hard disk recording you can do everything at home. So it's not even necessary nowadays to have that stuff. But um, the experience we have gained over the years is certainly helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I've read somewhere a while ago that while you were recording Follow the Blind you listened to Testament and Forbidden and, and American Trash and Power Metal. What are you listening to now when you're recording Beyond the Red Mirror? Uh, it's, it's different, it's still the, the same stuff from the old days, but also modern stuff. I like, I don't know, I, I like the, the Babel album from uh, Mumfords and Sons, for example. I, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it really, there are no, no boundaries. I mean, it's, it's whatever, you know, someone likes. Magnus probably is the one most into. Um, Nowadays, metal. Um, and then I are a little more old school. There's so much music which has an influence or an impact, but um, it's not like in the old days that a certain genre is an inspiration. As you said, the Testament Forbidden, that was especially for Markus and Andre when we did uh, Follow the Band and Tom as well, a, a strong influence, very strong influence. Mm -hmm. Um, also on the new album, I think this is the first time from Blind Guardian you kind of touched on your past because the story on Beyond Red Mirror yeah. is a continuation of uh, imagination from the other side. I've, I'm not sure if, I, if my information is right, but I think uh, what sparked this continuation of this story is you reading Stephen King's Dr. Yes. Sleep, right? Yeah. But um, in the first case, it was the music which uh, created that link. If you listen to a song like The Ninth Wave, for example, which has been the last song we composed for the album, there are uh, uh, links, strong ties musically to imaginations of the song. And um, this all made me, you know, thinking about a story related to imaginations. But yeah, the, the idea of Stephen King revisiting uh, one of the uh, uh, protagonists of his own stories. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot, and um, I played around with that. Uh, yeah, you you used also. I'm not sure if for the first time, but in this capacity, you used three choirs and two orchestras, right? Yeah, but uh, they they do not perform together. Mm -hmm. So it, it was more a question of schedules, and um, a question what we demanded in, in certain parts. The only moment, at least the choirs are performing together, is the, the introduction of the ninth wave, which needs such, you know, huge momentum. Mm -hmm. There we asked all of the choirs to do that particular part. Mm -hmm. well, another interesting thing about the new album, there is a bonus track on the special edition called Doom, right? Mm -hmm. Which kind of hints that this story isn't really yeah, over yet, right? Yeah, that's uh, so a good point. Of, so, I mean, the story can be seen as, you know, an attempt to to tell a sci-fi, Arthurian, epic quest story. Like, you know, someone is on his quest for the Holy Grail, to say so. Mm -hmm. um, and since I then decided that, you know, the boy is considered to be Arthur, it was obvious for me that there needed to be an open end. Mm -hmm. and, and when we switched Doom into the storyboard, it just fitted perfectly well. Yeah. It kept it open and, you know, I, I don't think that we necessarily have to wait another 20 years, mm -hmm. but um, I do have some ideas for the continuation. Mm -hmm. The problem could be um, the direction the music is going to take after the orchestra, uh, because then we are basically free to do whatever we want to do, yeah. and if the music talks a different language, then I can't continue mm. into that direction. Otherwise, you know, I will find my chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
actually the Beyond Red Mirror is not fully a conceptual album, right? Like Nightfall in Middle Earth was. It is. It is. It is. All, all the songs linked all together. All songs are included, and um, they they de define the two different worlds and um, different aspects and moments mm -hmm. and uh, the perspective, as I do in many of my lyrics, uh, is changing rapidly and quickly. So um, for the listener, it sometimes might be difficult to judge who's talking, you know. Yeah. And um, it's also an inspiration received by, by nowadays media, you know, by, by the, the, the mass information, the, the, the major amount of information you have and you, there's no chance to filter anything. Mm -hmm. And this was my, my idea for the storyboard as well, you know. I, I try to um, deliver as much input as possible, mm -hmm. but um, with uh, different ideas about who's talking and um, whose goals, you know, have been featured in a particular moment. Mm -hmm. So um, it's also a question about what is right and wrong, you know, and how much that depends on the perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever been thinking, I don't know, of doing... I know you're a fan of Stephen King. Uh, when I was reading, I know, his stuff like The Stand or The Dark Tower, I always imagined Blind Guardian music playing with it. Have you ever, I don't know, thought of doing something like you did with Tolkien? You know, I, I know you've done Stephen King songs yes. in the past. As an inspiration it's great, but you know, to do straightforward storytelling in terms of a whole album, I would not do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. If if that's the case, you know, you, you would have to work with the author directly, like mm -hmm. we do on uh, the orchestral project, or I would have to come up with my own stories. These are the, the two options I see for the future. Um, I was in dream, but I, I would not go and do a concept, complete concept um, for the Dark Tower, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm getting to the end slowly. Maybe two obvious questions, but I think fans really want to hear that. First, um, is there maybe a Blind Guardian open air festival sometime in the future? I would, we would love to do. Um, the best option for us could be the orchestral album because mm -hmm. then we could easily fill three nights in a row with different music. We could you know, do the regular heavy metal set, we could do a sort of unplugged whatever mm -hmm. and an orchestral uh, performance. So this could be a very good option. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's not necessary for us to do so. Yeah. There must be an occasion. Mm -hmm. Like it was before, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the second obvious question, I, I know you get nagged a lot about that, obviously, Demons and Wizards, is, is there...? Demons and Wizards is always an option, but um, John is slowly recovering at the moment and his main focus again will be on Iced Earth, yeah. while I'm still stuck in live recordings for the Blind Guardian Live album and the orchestral album. So, um, I don't see that happening before the end of 2017 because we have engagements up to that moment already so we want to do and we have spoken about it uh, several times it's not easy to accomplish it seems yeah, yeah. there will be at both, least 12 years in between busy. we are both busy and we, we both you know like our main jobs mm -hmm. but we also would love to do so but, i mean there, there are limits and um, if I'm at home for two months and then have to consider, you know, how to maintain mm -hmm. the Demons and Wizards album and the same with John, of course, it's impossible. Yeah. But we will do so one day. Mm -hmm. okay, you mentioned the live album. Is, do you have a time frame for that? I would guess it's going to be re released in 2016, but I cannot tell you exactly when. What we are planning is uh, doing the mixing in. Uh, summer already, but that would just um, include the, the Euro European dates and uh, maybe Asia and Australia, but we also do Northern and, and Southern America, America and we may do something with that material as well, so uh, somewhere in 2016 is very realistic, I would say. Look forward to hearing that, okay. So, final, if you have a question for many uh, Sorry, a message for many Slovenian fans. Yeah. Hey, my friends, um, I hope you enjoy a great show today. If you missed it, bad luck. Um, it's always a pleasure to be in Slovenia, and Ljubljana is a beautiful city, and I uh, hope to see you there next time. Bye.